Jameson, but Mr. Jameson, right if there. you can please let the world know a little bit about what you do, what you support, what you stand for, and then why we're here today. Well, first of all, I'm here today because I am inspired by my deceased mother, uh, who's been up in heaven for like the past six years. Um, you know, my story is phenomenal for the same fact that when I wrote the movie Survivor, when I wrote the movie Surviving Tough Time, it shed light on some of my struggles. It also shed light on my upcoming. It tells the world how I was able to craft a new way to live under the, the most unusual set of circumstances. And I'm going to say the most unusual set of circumstances because as a kid, I come from a domestic violence family. When I was a kid, I was child abused. When I was a kid, I used to watch my stepdad abuse my mother physically. Break her nose, hit her head, back with hammers, and all of the domestic violence scene that you would ever want to see as a kid. Not only did he abuse her, every day I used to get home from high school, from school. Grade school was the elementary. I mean, I used to get beaten almost every day. You know what I'm saying? So, long story short, to to have those reflections and understand that, you know, God keep people here for a purpose. Yes. And my purpose was to tell my story. Yes. I couldn't tell my story in Tennessee, you know? So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I went through a bad divorce, and the, the divorce is what led me to come to California and close the chapter on the old book mm-hmm. and open up the new book. Okay. And now I'm finna confess yeah. because of my stupidity and my selfishness. It caused me to be in these situations that I'm in. You know? So going through those struggling periods after losing my mom, going through the divorce, sometimes you just get tired of being tired, right? Yes. I was a mother's boy. Losing my mom, I felt like it was the end of the world. Right, I right. freaking hit rock bottom. But as I reflect back on where I come from, right. I knew that God said, no, you got a lot to do. People here need you. I wasn't suicidal. I never thought about killing myself. I remember remorseful. Yes. Remorseful for breaking my ex-wife apart. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Remorseful for betraying my family. You know what I'm saying? And it took me to find me right. for me to be able to confess to her wow. that I'm stuck faulting you for my own actions. Yes. You know? And so God knocked me down just to pick me up. So in 2012, I was reluctant to carry 2012 back to 1961 to 2013. So at that time, I asked God to fix me. Okay. I couldn't fix myself. Right. Find me yes. because I'm lost. Yes. Feel me because I'm weak yes. and I'm torn down. You know what I'm saying? That's when he comes. So that's when that yeah. click comes together. Said, Y'all gonna have me shouting. <laughs> coming right from now. poverty, coming from the hood, coming yes. from the projects, mm-hmm. from the heart of Midtown, Memphis, Tennessee, Lamont Terrace. When I grew up, we learned about dignity, respect, and integrity. This film, it shed light on where I come from. And the character that's in the movie, it's about the people that I grew up with. And like I said earlier, the premiere will be in Memphis, Tennessee, and the characters of this film will get an opportunity to meet the original people that they're playing. They'll tell you their own stories. I wrote about it. I grew up with them. I was on a craft table. I smoked the dollar joints with them. I drank from the same bottle with them. You know what I'm saying? I was in a game with them. You know what I mean? I did it all, but God delivered me. Yeah. And see, what people don't understand, when God delivered you from something, you don't go back. Right. When he pick you up and give you new life to live, if you save, you don't go back. Yes. The thought of life is important. So I wanted to reach out to the community and embrace charity organizations. So I'm going to get into the healthcare aspect of it. My mother died with stage for lung cancer. She was in remission for like 17 years when she died. Okay. The doctor said that we don't know what else more we can do. Take her home, give her whatever she wanted. Have a give her a good time. Right. Her time is short. I asked the doctor because I'm competent about health care. What about the biomarkers? Where are they? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Then I hit him in the head with the hammer when I spoke about the biomarkers. Because see, finding those biomarkers is to set up to establish that plan of treatment. You know that, right? You know? 
So going through the cycle of taking off the chemotherapy and doing all that holistic medicine stuff, right. the ozo enema, detoxifying the liver, rejuvenate the bloodstream, pure oxygen, right. and new cells. A lot of things that the, the community, the, the, they, don't they don't know about. They don't but know as a health care provider, I was able to step in and turn those six weeks into like about another 12 years. Wow. So basically, you helped your mother improve her quality of, of yeah. life and for the rest of her. And eating. it wasn't through pharmaceutical medicine. Of course, they should go take ultrasound and CAT scan to visually uh, locate the tumor and see if they progress or decrease or whatever it might be. But the bigger part is that I need to get to California, restart my life, and get my film out. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I got into acting. And not that I moved here to get into acting. I got discovered to get into acting. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My guy, Stefan Soloff, on the movie The Midnight Warriors and Speak of the Devil. I met him in Starbucks. And I'm explaining something about homelessness. You said people say you've been homeless before. You know, leaving Memphis and leaving my resident, that's another uh, form of being homeless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you don't have a key. You don't own a mortgage. You don't even have a lease. Right. On the I stayed in the embassy street for three months to get on my feet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? On top of that, I didn't know anybody when I moved here. Right. So I'm looking for opportunity to grow my business, not grow employment, but to yeah. grow my business. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So that, that gave me the idea to go downtown, Skid Row, yeah. where they need it most, and yeah. volunteer my health care wow. services and my, and my expertise in wound care. Exactly. Right? So a lot of people know I'm here saving limbs. And I'm saving limbs by like a non-invasive treatment called a simple molecular diagnostic test. And what that does, that gives us accuracy on your wound healing. When we take specimen from the biofilm and look, and look into the molecular and take take specimen from the molecular and look into biofilm and locate that pathogen that's slowing down the healing process. Then we take a simple report and send it to pharmacy from pathology to pharmacy and they customize a antibiotic gel that's tailored to your DNA. Okay. So that really decreases the healing process from nine months to maybe a year oh, that's, down to, that's, down that's to 30 to 45 days. Wow. You see what wow. I'm saying? And it's and rejuvenating. Of the, it's rejuvenating. Of, of yeah. course, you know, oxygen gives the body what it needs in, yes. in, in terms of that, right? Right. Yeah. And, um, and so when we when we locate the pathogen and give the body more oxygen, then we basically give the body what it needs. So wow. surviving tough time is more in terms of uh, addressing social issues in the community. Okay. Homelessness, domestic violence, cancer, uh, sexual assault, uh, mental illness, yeah. all the above. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I wrote the movie to Survive in Tough Time. Because life knocked me down the time, too, but it picked me up, too. And the cool thing, well, not the cool, but the thing, the real thing about it is everybody has been uh, through something. And you can't tell a, a story, you know, a testimony without a story. You know, everybody has a testimony. Everybody has been through something. And um, through the works of Dr. Jameson now, he is producing not only a film, but also a stage play uh, with an excellent cast of people who have survived, the, uh, surviving tough times. And so look for it. Um, do you have a trailer out or do you have a Facebook page? Or I got an IMDb. Media? Go to IMDb and you can locate all my film credits. Go to stage32.com slash Dr. RJ, Dr. D-R-R-J-A-I. You can see all my trailers and, and movies on my uh, Stay 32 page. Well, I, I, first of all, thank you for putting um, this awesome uh, event together. Thank you for giving back to the community. Thank you for bringing everyone together, unified, and this is what it's uh, all about out here uh, downtown. Again, if you all are out here in California or down to, uh, uh, in Los Angeles, come on down. We're right from the Staples Center, 122 East Washington Street. We're getting ready to have an awesome performance. Thank you so much and come on down. Thank you. Thank you.